So this is Friday's uh, reflection, uh, reflection number 10 uh, for Lent and this time we are jumping into the beginning of John's story about Jesus and like yesterday we're looking at um, a slightly different account of how um, the first disciples were called and it's not hugely different but um, if that's ever confused you um, about the Bible, I think a policeman friend of mine always said, beware uh, witness testimonies that are exactly the same because they've all been talking to each other. Um, so if you ever want to get away with a crime, don't do that. Um, and also um, there's something sound and good in the fact that these four um, kind of eyewitness stories about Jesus are all slightly different um, but each um, person that's telling the story is obviously telling it from their heart, their interest, their passion, their curiosity, uh, their conviction, their belief. So it's not really a problem uh, that these are slightly different but if that has ever bothered you then do ask someone who um, might have some kind of helpful answers. You can ask me, um, but feel free to ask someone else who you might know too. So, uh, this is John 1, uh, chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples of John's heard him say this and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We found the Messiah, which translated means anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter, also translated Rock. So there's a lot of big weighty things going on here in these verses and um, I think some of this is quite tricky for us to understand and kind of get our heads around what does it mean, here is the Lamb of God, uh, so who is John, John has disciples, Jesus has disciples, John's disciples then follow Jesus. Um, you know, there's lots of big words here like rabbi and, you know, meaning teacher. What's the significance of Peter, meaning rock? So there's a lot of stuff to just kind of stop and take a moment and kind of get our heads around. And a lot of this is to understand the time when all of this happened and um, when it was being written to you. So, I uh, had a great teacher who kind of um, described what it might have been like in um, in the marketplace in Jerusalem. So actually all the chatter at the time, everyone is uh, busy asking, when is the Messiah coming? And um, They've been oppressed and oppressed and oppressed. And now here we are at the time of the New Testament. So all throughout the Old Testament, that's the story. You get to the New Testament, here's yet another oppressor in the Roman Empire, which is huge and brutal and very organised. And everyone has a different idea about who the Messiah is going to be, uh, how the Messiah is going to overthrow the Romans. Um, uh, most people have a sense that um, this is going to be a physical battle, a physical overthrowing that, that 
God is ordaining this to happen uh, and God will be with them in that. Um, so no one really expects the Messiah to turn up um, like he does in Jesus. Certainly not as a tiny baby. Um, certainly not ending dying on a cross, although of course that's the beginning. So when John, uh, the baptizer, who is kind of a bit uh, on the edges of society, but has definitely gathered a lot of uh, following and lots of people are chatting and they you know who's John and what's he all about. Maybe John is the Messiah. So when he goes, look, there's the Lamb of God. Everyone's like, okay, uh, that would have meant he is the Messiah. He, and he is the one that's going to overthrow the Romans. Um, and so I think it's really interesting that Jesus says to John's disciples, what are you looking for? It's kind of, I think the question for us today is, what do we, what do we look for in our saviour? In, uh, the Bible says the author of salvation, what does that mean for us? And I think for all of us, that will mean something very intimate and personal and different. That might mean uh, healing, that might mean um, uh, overthrowing of some oppressive thing or person in your life, uh, setting you free, um, loving you. I mean, what are you looking for? Um, in Jesus. And then I think there are some other really interesting things. Um, so I love just John's, like it's four o'clock in the afternoon. He gives us all these little details, which is always fascinating. Um, and then of course, Andrew desperately wants his brother to come and find the Messiah. He's found the Messiah, this is huge. He calls his brother to meet this Messiah. Um, and um, yeah, Jesus renames him, kind of gives him a nickname. I quite like all these nicknames that Jesus gives to the disciples. Um, I think there's something quite intimate in that. Like he doesn't even know him. This is the first time they've met. And yet he gives him a nickname, kind of brings him in, makes him one of the gang. Um, but also there's something really interesting in this because he calls him the rock. And of course, if we read on, Peter, Simon Peter, um, denies Jesus three times. He's the least rock-like, perhaps, of all the disciples. And yet, even here in the beginning, and of course, Jesus' death and resurrection transforms the whole of Peter's understanding. And we see this journey of him coming and seeing Jesus and growing in, and in his understanding of who Jesus is for all of the disciples, but for, for Simon Peter particularly. But Jesus calls out the good in Peter before Peter can even see it or understand it himself. And I think that's kind of beautiful because the world doesn't often do that. Um, I think the world often, you know, we might get something wrong or we get nicknames that are um, kind of eat into our fears and our flaws. Oh gosh, if people really, you know, think that I am flaky, <laughs> we might have described Peter that way. Um, and yet Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus calls out something that is going to be good and solid and fulfilled eventually. Um, and of course, the interesting story for all of us is always in the eventually. <laughs> it's always in that journey of working out who Jesus is uh, and 
and then deciding to follow, to come and see. And then in the beautiful work of becoming more like him, more like who he's called us to be. So if that um, is a word for you, uh, then we'll just, we'll just pray. It's a word for us all, isn't it? So Father God, we just thank you that you see us. You see us and you know us better than we see or know ourselves. And we thank you for the goodness that you see in us. And we're sorry. We're sorry for all the times that our own fears and doubts about ourselves shout louder than your truth about us or stop us from following you. So we just ask for your peace and presence in our day, the eyes to see and the ears to hear who it is you've called us to be. Amen.